All right. Usually we, we uh, see Mike uh, doing interviews, you know, but uh, obviously he, he sees so many startups and so good in, in having a, an idea of everything that is happening, what are the hot, uh, hottest trends and, uh, and what is very interesting in Europe. So I think if Mike is ready, I'll be really, really interested in uh, listening at your presentation. I don't know if you know him, Mike Butcher. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, when Luca and the d team at Populous were putting this together, um, they said, could I speak about um, uh, some of my impressions about uh, uh, what I see about European startups uh, scaling up from Europe? So I thought I'd come up with a couple of ideas. Uh, those are my details. You can email me. Good luck. I get a lot of email. Um, but don't worry. Uh, there are a few secret ways, uh, secret backdoors to uh, getting into uh, a TechCrunch uh, e uh, inbox. Uh, but you'll have to uh, bri bri bribe me with alcohol to, to find out what they are. Um, here's a couple of ideas. So how do we get big from Europe, right? How do we scale up? How do we create something that's, that's really, really, uh, you know, significant? Um, here are a couple of thoughts. The valley looks like this. And this is the thing is it's, very, it's a big cluster. And one of the things I think that you might want to take away from TechCrunch Italy um, that we've been talking about over the last few days, the last couple of days, is the value of clustering, the value of location, being near to each other, because that is what creates speed. When you have to get, um, a, you know, when you have to get a plane everywhere all the time just to kind of go and talk to your investors or just to hire people or whatever, you know, it gets in the way of speed. And startups are about speed. Startups are about high growth. And um, this is a huge advantage, and it's something that we have to learn from and take advantage of ourselves. Um, they have this advantage. They also have this big homogenous market. And we have got this. It's a bit of a mess. It's a mess of fragmented markets, fragmented languages, fragmented skill sets, fragmented investors. But we can make it happen. One of the things that important to remember is that in 2014 and in the, the era of networked economies, we have to think smart. We have to think about innovation being a distributed thing. It's distribution is, and the network effect is something that we have to take advantage of. We have to use it to our own advantage. We have to be smart. We have to think about um, being more networked and understanding these networks. One of the investors that you heard earlier today on the panel didn't talk about Italian startups, they talked about European startups, they talked about the network effect of Europe. And that's something that we have to take advantage of if we're gonna grow, if we're gonna scale up, and we're gonna build big companies from Europe. Here's some advice. Don't tell anyone where you're from, honestly. If I, as a, I'm a British guy, as you could probably tell, and if I walk into a, a Silicon Valley office and go, hello, terribly nice to meet you. My name is Mike Butcher. I am from Fulham in London. And God save the Queen, I'm here to present my company. Thank you very much. They just look at me and laugh. They might like, they might um, enjoy my British accent, they might enjoy my, you know, ironic manner, but basically they couldn't give a fuck where I'm from. They just couldn't give a fuck, or as in Britain we like to say, a flying fuck. Sorry to be British and language and use my language like that, but throw the F-bomb, I think as the Americans call it. But just to emphasize this, nobody cares where you're from. Don't walk into VC offices wearing, flying the flag of the colors of your country. They literally do not care. They want to see a product that is going to ace it and create an amazing, phenomenal company. And similarly, unless you're talking to Corriere Saloni, uh, 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 Italian newspapers, uh, Deutsche Zeitung, or, you know, they don't really care. They care, okay, that you're from Berlin or from Munich or from Rome or from Milan or from St 
Stockholm or okay, they care because they're playing on the home team. But when you're talking to the tech press, like TechCrunch, GigaOM, The Next Web, all of these guys, you know, they don't really, really care either. They want to basically write about you as if you're going to be the next big thing because journalists have egos and journalists like to write about the next big thing. So you tell them that you're the next big thing and don't tell them where you're from, because especially when you're <laughs> building companies. It doesn't really matter. Here's an example, right? Anybody know where Seismic was built? Ah, someone said Paris. Very interesting you said that. Seismic was not built in Paris. Seismic was built by Loïc Lemur, who was in Paris, but he was in Paris. He, he had a company uh, called uh, Six Apart, which he sold to Movable Type. I think that was what it was moved to Silicon Valley, built Seismic out of Silicon Valley, but he didn't build it in Silicon Valley. Seismic was built in Bucharest, in Romania. Nobody knows it. And he did it with an incredibly talented team of engineers. And one thing about the Soviet Union, uh, with its uh, obsession with engineers and maths, and luckily they had people like Lenin to tell them that chess is gymnastics for the mind, that the education system ended up being incredibly engineering oriented. That legacy fed through to all those former Soviet states and eventually into a place like Romania where the education system is still pr pretty much based on the old Soviet system and lots and lots of talented engineers there. Seismic was built in Romania. Every time I saw Loic, I'd say, hey man, how's that Romanian startup of yours getting along? And yet he, he sort of hit me over the head. Um, but nobody cares. Uh, it was about whether or not the product was any good. Now, I'll leave that to you to decide whether or not Seismic was any good. That's not my point. My point is nobody cares where it's built. It's what it does. So, emphasize the product above everything else. Talk about the product obsessively. Talk about what it can do, how it's going to make money, how it's going to save people money, all of those things. Those are the things you need to do. I won't labor the point. You get it, right. Let's move on. Here's another observation. Get traction in a market you understand. How did uh, Spotify uh, kick the tires on its own product and work out what it needed to do to disrupt the music industry, to uh, disrupt file sharing? Um, it started big in Sweden, and it really understood its Swedish market before it went international. Um, and this is something that I think a lot of European startups have a great advantage with is that they can build something in a home market, uh, work out what works, and then take it international. Um, there's an Irish startup called Balcony TV that got quite big uh, by just uh, literally videoing uh, musicians on a balcony and then scaling that up on a YouTube channel um, and did very well out of that. And now their Balcony TV is all over the world. But they did it first in Ireland. But once you get that traction, don't, don't, be simp uh, don't be sort of too nationalistic. We built in Italy, we're staying in Italy, we're going to get big in Italy, we're going to own Italy. Well, okay, great, but come on, there's a whole big world out there. Think about going international, be ruthless with your product. You know, Spotify didn't, Spotify didn't sort of stay, be, wasn't happy with the fact that they were, you know, had um, captured the Swedish market. They went international. So think about that. Now, here's some other points. Communication. I think 50% of being a startup is about communication. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to educate a marketplace, you're supposed to educate investors, you're supposed to educate journalists, the media, partners about what you're doing. Because what you're doing is often quite complex. And you've got to be communicative about it. You've got to have all of the pitches that you need down. You have to have the elevator pitch that lasts 30 seconds. You have to have the slightly longer one in your mind that lasts two minutes. And then you have to have the investor pitch. You have to have the pitch for the press. You've got to rehearse this. You've got to think about it so that whenever somebody asks you, what do you do, you can go bang, in one sentence or two sentences. That's it. I was looking at uh, DN Capital's website today when I was preparing for our panel with Zinad. And on their contact page, it says, here's our email address. Here's what we want to know from you. Uh, we want a description of the company in two sentences. That's all they want. So in order for you to be able to get what you do down 
into those two sentences, you have to th think about how you communicate. <sighs> so, tell a story. Um, a lot of the time when you're talking about startups, uh, people just immediately say what the company does, you know, kind of at the end point, you know, we can save you 50% off your blah, 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 because of blah, blah, whatever, simple. But you're not really telling a story, you're not really giving somebody a little journey. And if you could tell a story in a short, short space, even better. You know, we were sitting around in a coffee shop one day and we, came, we realized that uh, paying, with our, uh, paying with credit cards was over and we wanted to do mobile payments. Everyone around us agreed with it. We went through this process. Telling a story is a human thing. It's kind of taking somebody through a process. So think about telling a story uh, when you're trying to communicate what you do. Um, now, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. A lot of time, entrepreneurs often say, uh, you know, we've got you know, this great team. Well, the thing is, is the fantastic team is the one that can pivot. So the A team with the B plan always beats the B team with the A plan, you know. Aim for a niche. Um, sure, there are a lot of big problems out, the world, out there in the world, but if you can look at one particular problem, it's about um, in solving that problem really, really well. This is effectively kind of what, what Web 2.0 was back in the day, was taking an application, look at, that, like, look at like Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word has tons of little, tiny little features. Startups came along and just went, you know what we're going to do? We're going to focus on, I don't know, spelling or, you know, tiny little niches inside applications and then turn that into a big platform. And that's, that became something that was a good strategy. And it depends on what you're doing, but this is one strategy. And one, once you've got some traction, right, start to think about raising money. Quite a lot of people think about raising money too early when they haven't built a product and they haven't got any traction. You know, and I constantly have to tell it's often young entrepreneurs, look, you know, you haven't got anything yet. You've got to go out, you've got to live on noodles for three months and build a product and then, then you can start talking about it to potential investors because you've shown some early traction. And I think we, we heard it on the panel earlier today was that, you know, from Rob Buffett from Balderton, he said um, that, you know, the old way of doing business uh, is thinking about revenues. Well, you know what? A lot of investors want to see traction. And if, there's, if you've got a company that's growing like a weed and you haven't, but you haven't monetized it yet, well, that's what investors want to hear because they want to get in on the ground floor when they're a the company that's growing like a weed. Um, then get on a plane. Don't think about, don't sit in your own city going, oh my God, there's no damn investors. You know, get on a plane. It's just Europe and, you know, the world is available to you. Go out to the valley, spend three months in the valley making some contacts, networking. Go to London, definitely go to London. Um, I'm not, sorry, I'm just going to have to tell you this. Go to London, go to where, you know, to Barclay Square in the Mayfair. You go to the coffee shop, the Starbucks in Barclay Square, and five VCs will walk in, and they're all looking for their skinny latte macchiato, basically. So go there and meet them, get on a plane, and then say, I'm building something in Rome. You've got to see it. It's amazing. Come out to Rome, or I'll come back next week, and I'll show you a slide deck, etc. Hit them up. I'm thinking about running a conference in Mayfair just to hit all the VCs. Um, right, here's an example of... Uh, startups who've done this, Erpley. Now, Erpley, anyone heard of Erpley? Put your hand up. One or two. Now, the interesting thing about them is that they were from Estonia. I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm going to try and speed up. Estonia, tiny little country, barely a couple of million people, and that they had an idea about point of sale software. They, um, they won Seed Camp, which is a European accelerator running out of London. Uh, Repair payment solution, they reckoned that they had a really disruptive product, but they were from Tallinn in Estonia. You know, when you have Tallinn on your business card, you go, what, where, the, where the hell is that a lot of the time? So, but they didn't think about that. They didn't let that limit them. They knew that they had an amazing product. So they had 200 clients that were break even, and they had subscribers. They had some early traction. Then, in March 2010, with that early traction, they managed to get a great Series A from 
index ventures. They came, got up to 2,000 users, and now they've got over 20,000 users. They've got an office in New York, you name it. They had a product, they focused, knew what they wanted to do, and they did it. And they didn't kind of go around bemoaning the fact that they couldn't find an investor in Tallinn in Estonia, because there are very few. There's maybe one called Ambient Sound, which is the ex-Skype guys. Uh, but they got on a plane and they made it happen. So, raise money when you've got traction, when you're late, and then you can, mo you can uh, start really motoring rather than doing it off the back of a one slide deck. So here's some ideas. Uh, this, is the, this isn't comprehensive, just some ideas here. Series A capital. Um, these are just, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll amend these. I've, I've got some more to add to this, but there's plenty of other Series A uh, money out there. We've got networks in Europe, we just need to find them. Here are some examples of new kids on the block, you know, uh, Minor Bridge and uh, H Farm in Italy, and then in, uh, you've got Notion, you've got uh, great, fast moving, early stage, and Series A venture capitalists and uh, investors forming all over the Europe right now. And then you've got accelerators. You've got, this is just an example, we've got uh, Le Camping in Paris, uh, you've got uh, Startup Sauna in Helsinki, Gamma Rebels in, uh, in Warsaw. And the thing about these guys is that they're opening up all over the place. You can apply to these accelerators from anywhere in Europe and they'll take you on. You don't have to be from their country, you just have to be, have a great product. Just a great product. And lots and lots of co-working all over the place. Tech Hub, which is something I was involved in in London, I'll declare an interest. Um, but then co-working is a great place to scale up and do what you're doing uh, in Europe. Lots and lots of noise. You create lots of noise, lots of startups. Create a story around what you're doing. Cluster, Silicon Roundabout in the east of London created a great story for the press and the media. And all of that attention fed into the ecosystem. And as you can see, that's even been mapped, the growth and the proliferation of startups in East London. And never forget that you're sexy because you're in startups. And don't be afraid of tackling those big ideas. Thank you very much. Well, well done. Thank you, Mike. Very All right. Thank you, later. All right.